Now let's send it up to the booth for the voice of the Royals, Jimmy Cook. And a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ron Cali Royals basketball on the Ron Cali Media Network. It's senior night at Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium as your 13 and 8 Ron Cali Royals winners of three straight and six of their last seven try to close the regular season with a bang and a win over parochial rival Burbuff. Hi again, everybody, alongside Andrew Mason. I'm Jimmy Cook. So pleased you've chosen to spend part of your Friday night with us here on RMN and a special tip of the cap. And congratulations to our very own Andrew Mason. It is senior night for Andrew. A tip of the cap. We'll say this post game as well for all your hard work over the years here with RMN. And as we look at tonight's matchup for the Braves and Ron Colley, it's a parochial matchup where Buff has the Circle City Conference title locked up. But Ron Colley can still play the role of spoiler in that all time series history and additionally gain some what would be helpful momentum going into the postseason. Yeah, good evening to everyone. Yeah, as you said, they've won the Circle City Conference. They have a great guard, Haywood, who averages about 21 points a game. They score almost 70 games. We need to have solid defense tonight so they don't even get close to that. Um, they're playing, and they have 15 wins and only five losses, so they've been well coached and they've well played. They played some great competition this year. Some of their opponents uh, are Carmel, Zionsville Cathedral, HSC. So those are pretty big 4A schools. So they can play with the best of them. Got a win over HSC in that matchup earlier in the season. And then to Andrew's point, they beat Lafayette Central Catholic by 32, Garen Catholic by 9, Chittard by 27, Covenant Christian by 31, and then defeated Heritage Christian in overtime, wound up beating them by 13. Just a couple of weeks ago, most recently, a 78-61 win over Tri-West for Ron Colley. Last time out, 54-47 winners on the road at LCC. We're going to step out for our first and only time here on Senior Night. We come back, we'll have our pregame conversation with Royals head coach Jamin Warnke. We'll also take a look at tonight's starters as well as Andrew's keys to the game. It's Ron Colley, Ember Buff, the regular season finale. Pregame chat with Coach Warnke on the other side on the Ron Colley Media Network. Hi folks, it's Ben Stallings with Beck Service Center. Automotive breakdowns and routine maintenance never come at a good time. Let us help take the stress out of your automotive repairs. With 10 mechanics and 32 bays, we can get you back up and running with minimal downtime. Quality parts, experienced mechanics, locally owned and operated since 1977. Located at the southeast corner of Madison and Edgewood, we are pretty darn good at fixing cars. Let's go Royals. Marion University wants to know, what are you made of? At Marion University, our students are made of character and faith. Our students are service-minded and want to make a difference in the world. Our students possess the skills and intellect required of leaders. Come to Marion University, Indy's premier Catholic university, and let us help you find out what you're made of. You can apply for free today at marion.edu. Welcome back to the Ron Kelly Royals pregame show. Royals winners of three straight, six of their last seven, trying to make it four straight to close the regular season for senior night and the home finale at Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium when they welcome in parochial rival, the rebuff Jesuit Braves. Joining us, he does each and every game day. Royals head coach, Jamie Warnke. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Coach, off the bat, and for somebody outside the program, this might seem insignificant, but when you look at the adversity you individually went through with the roster a year ago. I want to tip the cap to you. I know goals are bigger than this, but with that third straight win, you are now 500 for your career as a head coach in just your second year. Like it was, it was a rough go last year with a lot of growth, but I know you saw that. That said, to have plenty of games still this season and beyond, what does it mean year one, year two to see – I just to make you be selfish for a second that type of turnaround in year two I love where we're at right now um you know we get on that John Harrell website like tons of times every day you know and and last year that 9 and 14 the season didn't seem like 9 and 14 it felt like a successful year and uh, but I remember telling my dad a few different times but gosh dang it people get on that website all over the state and all they see is 9 and 14 they don't see how the season went sure. um, so yeah this year you know being 13 and 8 so far um, yeah I'm really happy with the uh, 
trajectory of our program. And, you know, I think we're going to keep getting better and better. And I hope that when I'm talking to you in the post game, we're one game over 500. I, I think we all would like that, no doubt, especially a good way to close the regular season. Your group last time out went on the road to LCC, a place that is very difficult to win at. Uh, fifth time in the last 30 years or so that Ron Colley goes to LCC and gets a victory. And yes, LCC made some runs, and Coach Wants on the call for that game and joked about the ghosts of the past and no lead being safe up there. And there was maybe a whisper of that in the second half. But other than that, pretty complete performance for your group, 54-47. to 47. Seven winners with the tape show. Exactly that. It showed unselfish play. It showed, you know, our senior Drew Kagris making big shots. It showed Drew Kagris making them, Noah Schmaltz making them, Joe Taylor, another double figure night. But most importantly, I know I sound like a broken record, um, but we had 18 assists, you know. So when, when we're assisting, when we're getting teammate shots, when we're getting into paint and kicking and playing off closeouts, that's when we're our best. And, and you know, we did it up there. We did it up there the other night. So we we were really happy with how we played up there. Tonight, a, a shorthanded lineup for the Royals against Burbuff. What can you tell us about that, and how much are you going to rely on, especially your seniors tonight against a good Burbuff team? Yep, so we will be without Eli Lauk tonight. He's out sick. Um, we'll also be without Charlie Elsner um, as he is you know, going to be with his family tonight. We're, gonna, we're, we're playing with a little bit of heavy hearts tonight uh, with – uh, with what Charlie has gone through here, but we're also going to play with a ton of extra motivation. Charlie means a ton to our program, and um, you know we're going to go out there and play with the effort that that he comes and attacks every day with. And um, but as far as we're buff, um, you know they're really they're really good. They're they're one of the best teams on our program and on our schedule, um, and we are going to be shorthanded. But I have no doubt that our guys are going to be ready to go out and compete. You know, no matter no matter how many guys we we have to play, I have no doubt that we'll be motivated and, and ready to play tonight. I want to talk about the senior class as a whole. Before we do that, you, you mentioned Charlie Elsner and heck, he was a player that hadn't picked up competitive basketball since middle school yeah. and then is asked to be a valuable depth piece on this team. Just, just individually, how, how proud of the growth of Charlie are you? Yeah, so he played as a freshman, took off his sophomore right. and junior year, yeah. and then um, man, when he came to me late last spring and expressed interest in playing basketball, I was just super happy because while, you know, he would tell you he's not the most skilled basketball player, but he's a great culture guy. Yeah. So I knew that we had Joe Taylor coming up from JV, and you know we had Drew Kagers and Eli Miller as our as our seniors. Uh, but to add one more senior who is just great for our culture because he shows up every day and he works Joe Taylor so hard in practice, and and he's tough on Joe and he holds Joe accountable for things. And but then when Joe's making those threes at Lafayette Central Catholic, you can see it on film. You know Charlie is the first guy to to get off the bench and cheer for him. You know. So um, he's been extra valuable, you know, to our program just from a from a leadership standpoint. He's taken he's taken a role and he's taken some pride in Joe Taylor's and Joe Taylor's development, and it's just been it's been great to have him part of our program for his senior year. Rest of the senior class, led of course by Drew Kagaris and what he's meant to this program, but also Eli Miller, just giving an opportunity to speak on those seniors that are honored tonight. Yeah, we'll start with Eli. Um, we had a senior dinner the other night on on Wednesday night and. The one thing I said about Eli, you know, it's obviously tough to be a senior who gets minimal playing time, but we've never seen any sort of uh, poutiness or bad attitude from Eli. That's part of the reason why we, we wanted him in our program is because of the type of kid he is, the type of work ethic that he comes with um, every day. And, um, you know, he's a big part of our program. Even though he doesn't play a lot, he doesn't score a lot, you, you know, that he's not on the stat sheet. But uh, another culture guy, another guy that young guys can look up to, and, and know that he does everything the right way. And then we have Drew Keg. I mean, Drew is a, um, a special player. Um, another thing I said on Wednesday night, you know, about Drew is I've been a part of this basketball program since the 98-99 season. You know, that was my freshman year of high school. And I'm not sure I can think of a player that has improved more from his freshman year to a senior year. Drew was a, a pretty good player as a freshman on the freshman team, and now he's a really good player 
as a senior on the varsity team, I, he works hard by himself in the gym. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of the development that he's shown in his game. And then he's also just a, a great leader, positive words all the time, and, uh, you know, encourages our, his young teammates. So really this special, this, this senior class is a really special, special group. Tonight's opponent in the Rook Jesuit Braves. They're 15-5 and five on the season. A lot of good pieces on this roster. A similar vibe to the team that you went on the road and beat a year ago. Recent results, LCC by 32, Garen Catholic by 9, Chichard by 27. Got a win over Heritage Christian in overtime and then defeated Tri-West the other day. Uh, keys to the game, what stands out to you about the Braves? Taking care of the ball, you know uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna pick us up a little bit. I imagine um, if, if we get a shot attempt every possession and we get our best shot every possession. I think we're going to be in good shape. You know, our, our half-court defense has been pretty good all year. You know, I told my son on the way here, I think we got to score 55 points tonight. If we score 55 points tonight, I think we're in good shape because we're going to – we play a little bit of a patient style on offense. So as long as, you know, we can have great possessions with multiple ball reversals, I think we're good there. And then I love our half-court defense. We've got to get that first rebound, okay, which is also um, all, always important. And tonight we got to, you know uh, – Haywood is their is their main three point shooter. So we're gonna we're gonna you know make his shots tough. And after that, there are, there are a lot of solid players that we just have to that we have to guard and get that first rebound. Royals against the Braves, regular season finale, senior night in the home finale as well. Coach, best of luck out there. Another chance for a quad one win. I love, I love a good quad one win. Now you're speaking my language. As Royals said, Coach Jamin Warnke, we'll be back with line ups and the tip after this. You're listening to Ron Cali Royals Basketball on the Ron Cali Media Network. It's February at Peterman Brothers. That means when you install a new qualifying AC system, the furnace is free. And we'll install it next day guaranteed or we'll give you 500 bucks. Take advantage of this incredible savings for a limited time. Visit PetermanHVAC.com to schedule your free furnace installation and we'll see you tomorrow. Peterman Brothers, where great service runs in the family. A proud supporter of Ron Kelly High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. Hi folks, it's Ben Stallings with Beck Service Center. Automotive breakdowns and routine maintenance never come at a good time. Let us help take the stress out of your automotive repairs. With 10 mechanics and 32 bays, we can get you back up and running with minimal downtime. Quality parts, experienced mechanics, locally owned and operated since 1977. Located at the southeast corner of Madison and Edgewood, we are pretty darn good at fixing cars. Let's go Royals! Steve's Flowers and Gifts is your family-owned Indianapolis and Greenwood florist. Our mission is to establish and maintain the highest level of floral value and customer service at comfortable consumer prices. For the best and freshest flowers in Indianapolis and surrounding areas, Steve's Flowers and Gifts has exactly what you're looking for. Check out our wide selection of flower arrangements to make your next occasion memorable. Call 317-787-3431 or visit us at 3150 East Thompson Road. Meet Zach. Zach rides everywhere, day and night, rain or shine. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we know Zach. We know he's been saving up for a car. We're here to help Zach and you. Now get pre-approved for auto financing as low as 3.99% APR. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Rates subject to credit approval and valid on purchase of 2020 or newer vehicles. Learn more at IMCU.com. When looking for reliable HVAC professionals, look no further than Ana and Bartram Heating and Cooling. Whether you need a routine maintenance check or an emergency repair on a heating or cooling unit, Ana and Bartram are available to handle all of your heating, cooling, and ventilation needs. Ana and Bartram strive to be the best, so call them today at 317-889-9574. They even have 24-7 emergency service. Call them today, Ana and Bartram, 317-889-9574.
Welcome back to Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium. Royals and the Braves. Regular season finale, home finale for your 13 and 8 Ron Cali Royals against the 15 and 5 Rough Jazz with Braves. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for the visiting Braves at one guard, a senior number 34, Evan Haywood, averaging 20 points per game. A six foot senior guard, number two, Jawan Brooks, averaging 13 points per contest. A six six senior forward, number five, Quinn Warren, averaging seven points per game. A senior forward, number 10, Will Ryan, averaging three points per contest to round out. Well, not quite round out, I beg your pardon. The 6'3 senior forward, Reese Butcher, number zero, rounds them out, averaging 12 points per game. Head coach Alan Glunt, 30 and 14, and this is his second year at the helm, 45 and 24 in his third year overall. For your 13 and 8, Ron Cali Royals. At one guard, a 6'3 senior, number 10, Drew Kegger, is averaging 17 points per game. At the other guard, a 6'2", junior number 14, Noah Schmaltz, averaging 8 points per contest. A 6'2", junior forward number 20, Luke Green, averaging 7 points per game. A 6'0", freshman guard number 23, Will Hegwood, averaging 5 points per night. And right in the mouth, in the middle, a big fella. A 6'7", sophomore center number 24, Joe Taylor, averaging 10 points and 6 rebounds per game. As we mentioned in the pregame show, a significant note for Coach Warnke after a rough go of it last year where it was a program that was walking the holes, trying to find players. Coach Warnke is now at 500. It is Ron Kelly career in just a second season turnaround. Quite a turnaround for Coach Warnke, and there's still games to play as well. He's 22 and 22 in this his second year at the helm. Now time on our pregame show as the Royals will be in their home whites, blue numerals, lettering, and the red trim. Maroon unis on the road for Brabuff, white numerals, lettering, and the gold trim as we await tip. We'll go to Andrew for his keys to the game. Come out with high energy at senior night. There's a, this gym is probably mostly sold out. Use a large crowd. As Coach Warnke has talked about, play complete 32 minutes of complimentary basketball. And this is uh, one more tune-up before FC on Tuesday night at Southport Fieldhouse. So. As Andrew alludes to there, we are a game away from the big one. That is, of course, the start of postseason play when the Royals are at Southport Fieldhouse on Tuesday, 7 o'clock start time there against Franklin Central. It's their last. There is a tomorrow game on the schedule. It'll be Quinn Warren to jump it up against Joe Taylor. Ball is tapped and won by the Braves. And we're underway on senior night from the Vinny. Braves operate right to left on your streaming device. Ryan has it at the top of the arc. Now gives to Butcher. Butcher into the painted area. Spins, turns, contorts his body. Left it short. Rebound Braves. Out of bounds. Last touch by Ron Colley. So we're both will have it. Baseline right underneath the Ron Colley hoop. It's Butcher to trigger. Butcher looks left, now finds a man in the corner. Three is in the air, it's short. Rebound and put back, no good by Brooks, but another offensive rebound, and now it's finally taken away by Will Hegwood, who gives to Drew Kageris, and he'll bring it up the floor. That's a good way to start the opening possession. Didn't let for buff score. Hegwood, right wing. Now top of the arc, Taylor. He pump fakes a three. Dribble handoff, Schmaltz. Noah at the left elbow. Pass to Green was nearly stolen away, and Green will reset things at the top of the arc. That was Juwan Brooks, the senior, who nearly poked that ball free. Hagwood waiting for a Taylor screen. Has it. Top of the arc. Pick and roll. Taylor deflected. Last touch by the Braves. It will stay on this end. Heavy senior-driven lineup for the Braves. They're identical in a lot of ways to the team they were a year ago, minus the growth that an entire year holds. Kagaris to inbound. Baseline ref gives it to Hagwood. Now back to Kagaris Around a screen. Tried to get a step back, nothing there. Kicks, Schmaltz to the corner, pump fakes a three. Whip around pass, Taylor stolen away and deflected. Brooks up ahead, two on two. Brooks, Euros. Blocking fouls the call. Green was there to try to take the charge. The official says no dice. Green will pick up his first personal, the first on either team. And it'll send Brooks to the charity stripe, a 64% free throw shooter. Fun fact, Luke Green is the leading charging, charging leader for Ron Kelly, so. Trying to draw another one and add to his total. First free throw for Brooks. Two dribbles, sets, good. Braves draw first blood, 1-0. 
With 6.50 to play here in the first. Brooks one more. A couple more dribbles. He measures. And he hits them both cleanly. 2-0 Braves. 6.50 to play first quarter. Full court pressure applied by Rebuff. Ron Colley tries to break it. They get it to Joe Taylor. Taylor looking for a guard. Finds Hegwood. They're still not out of the trap. Skip past to Green. Now the trap is called off. Luke to Hegwood. The leg of the Ron Colley R just past half court. Now right edge flips to Kagaris. Back to Hegwood right wing. At the top of the arc, they go Kagaris. Little chest pass. He'll do a jab step. Now puts the left hand on the floor. Green around a screen from Taylor. Pump fakes. Thought about a three. Now to Schmaltz in the corner. Hegwood. Right side of the floor. Hegwood around a screen from Green. Finds Taylor top of the arc. Now Schmaltz left side. They went under a screen. Noah. Mid post. Finds Taylor high post. Joe had it poked away. Last touch by Brebuff. We're passing up some good shots right now. So I... Well, a lot of that is to the closing ability of Brebuff. They've been very quick defensively, and then there was a... Spillage, a, I think. Yeah, as you pointed out, a spillage in the front row. So we have a mop and a bucket right near where this inbound is supposed to happen. And I think the game ball actually fell into the bucket. If not, it went into the spillage. Either way, they're going to get a new game ball. That's a first. They're trying to clean up what was a spillage in the stands. And the ball either landed straight in the mop, in the mop bucket, which, again, if that's what happened, that's it's a perfect incredibly game. impressive. And if it didn't get in the mop bucket, then I think it just went into the spill zone. That's handed to A.D. David Lau. He'll walk that and... I don't know what the protocol is there. Maybe wash that bad boy off. Either way, Royals will inbound. Sideline, left, far side. Kegris has to get it in. Finds Green in the half court. Now to Hegwood. Will right at half court. Gives the to Taylor top of the arc. Joe faces up. Now Hegwood into the painted area. Kicks. Corner. Green. Three. Short. Rebound. Skying high forward is Warren. Warren gives up ahead. Haywood. To Butcher, left wing, went to contact, no good. Rebound, Hagwood tried to split a double team. He was thrown to the floor. Butcher stole it away and threw it down with two hands. Rose got to come up and help that. Four nothing Braves, five and a half to play first quarter. Kagaris crosses the timeline, gives to Hagwood left wing, make that Schmaltz. Now green top of the arc, Kagaris right corner. He'll rise and fire for three, in and out. Board controlled, taken by Haywood. Haywood at the top of the arc. Gives to Brooks and a travel. That was nice defense by Schmaltz to force Haywood to convert the turnover, to commit the turnover, excuse me. In the near side of the backcourt, Green inbounds to Schmaltz who gives to Haywood. 5.05 to play first quarter, 4-0 Braves. Rose have yet to get a real clean look outside of that Kagaris three that did not go down. And now they try to force it on a back cut to Kagaris. Taylor threw it into the front row. A little bit of a sloppy start by Ron Kelly. Hopefully we can correct that. But it's only a four-point lead for Bob, so they're not taking advantage. Brooks top of the arc. Hand off. Ryan. Ryan at the top of the arc. Gives to Haywood. Step back, triple, no. Rebound and put back by Warren, no. And a loose ball foul going to go against the Royals. In fact, I think it's going to be in the act and get it on Taylor. So going to say on that put back that Warren went up for, Taylor made contact with him, and now they're shooting two free throws. The Royals bench is just realizing they're beside themselves. Are you the head coach? First free throw. No good. Ball don't lie. Missed the first one. Second free throw is good. Coach Warnke in an animated discussion with the head official with the answer the reply of why that was a foul in the act of shooting. The ref said he wasn't there. <laughs> Coach Warnke asked, why weren't you there? That's a great question. Hagwood at the Ron Caliar. Hand off to Schmaltz left side. 5-0 Braves. Those free throws were split. Royals still looking for their first field goal. Schmaltz top of the arc. Had his pass deflected. Got it back. His second pass was deflected. Here goes Brooks to the rack. He lays it up and in. And the Royals are going to need a timeout. 
7-0 out of the gate for Rebuff. The Circle City Conference champions flexing their muscles. 30-second timeout will take one as well. Brave 7, Royals nothing on the Ron Colley Media Network. Marion University wants to know, what are you made of? At Marion University, our students are made of character and faith. Our students are service-minded and want to make a difference in the world. Our students possess the skills and intellect required of leaders. Come to Marion University, Indy's premier Catholic university, and let us help you find out what you're made of. You can apply for free today at marion.edu. Four sixteen to play first quarter. Braves lead your Royals 7-0 with Andrew Mason. I'm Jimmy Cook. Full court pressure applied. Royals got to get it in, and they do to Kegaris. Drew walks it ahead and crosses the timeline, matched up with Butcher on the right wing. Around a Taylor screen, stops, pops, left the triple, left the triple short, and a rebound won by Haywood. Haywood stops, he pops, he left his wide, that's going to be last touch by the Braves, out of bounds, and hit the front of the rim, and rolled to the far side of the floor, out of play, so Ron Colley, no harm, no foul, but Andrew, the fact of the matter is and there's a foul 85 feet away, committed by Will Ryan, but the fact of the matter is you're halfway gone by in the first quarter, and the Royals don't have a bucket. Yeah, we just can't buy a bucket right now, there's just a huge, a huge lid on it, so Green into Hegwood. Hegwood crosses the timeline on the left wing. Around a screen from Taylor. Will, foul line, lost his dribble. Now finds Green, right wing, triple, no. And another rebound, won and secured by the Braves. Haywood carried it. Well, Haywood actually gave it to Butcher, who dribbled up the floor and carried it right in front of the official. And so Ron Colley... Is playing on thin ice to some extent because they're only down 7 0, but without the self inflicted wound by the Braves, this could be a lot worse. Yeah, hopefully Kessler comes off the bench and gives us a spark. We desperately need it right now. Yes, Andrew alludes to there. Connor Kessler checks into the ball game. Got to get it in, and he does to Hagwood as Green gets his first rest of the proceedings. Hagwood crosses the timeline. Matched up with Austin Ford, who just checked in for the Braves. Kessler, top of the arc, Taylor, right wing. They go back door to Schmaltz. It's a great play for the Royals. They love to run that one, and they're on the board. It ends a 7-0 run, and it's 7-2. Advantage Braves with 3.13 to play in the first. That was just a nice back cut by Schmaltz, and even better find by Taylor to break the goose egg in the scoring column for Ron Kelly. Four on the right wing over to Warren. Warren thought about a triple. Instead, he gives in the corner to Brooks. Post feed Haywood back to Brooks. He had it blocked away, and Kessler has the board. Up ahead, Haywood. He's behind the defense. He lays it up and in. Four straight for the Royals, and they're within a bucket in the blink of an eye with 2.50 to play in the first. Haywood. Cross court to Ford. At the top of the arc, matched up with Hagwood, crosses him over, drives, fall away shot, no, rebound, Taylor. Kagris wants to push, Drew, down the lane, oh, he was blocked with ease. Brooks just came up and basically hip-checked him at the foul line. He commits the personal, his first, the second on the Braves in the quarter, both teams with two fouls apiece. Royals will inbound, baseline right. Underneath the Braves hoop, Kegaris to trigger. Drew fakes up top, now goes that way to Taylor, who feeds Kegaris. Drew finds Kessler, now Schmaltz left wing. Noah around a screen from Taylor. Into the painted area, and he's fouled. Multiple Braves were there. That one will go on Sam, Sh correction, Evan Haywood, I beg your pardon. His first and the third on the Braves. Kegris will go to the other end of the baseline and inbound. Baseline left. Has to get it in. Needs help. And finds Taylor. Taylor in the corner. Gives to Schmaltz. They find Kegris around a screen, but Schmaltz doesn't go there just yet. Noah with the left hand. Dribbles around a Taylor screen. Thought about a triple. Now finds Kessler top of the arc. They swing to Hegwood right side. Will looking for a pick and roll instead to Schmaltz in the corner. Kessler posting up. They won't go there. They'll find Taylor top of the arc now and reset things to Kagaris. Drew guarded by Butcher. Had a screen. Spins away from it. 
Looking for separation, nothing there. Kessler, dribble handoff, Kageris. 1.45 to play in the quarter. Royals down by three. Hagwood, left wing around a screen from Taylor. Will spinning, turning, wild shot up and in. Oh my. Will Hagwood with four to lead all scores for the Royals. They're back within a point. A 6-0 Ron Colley run. Wild drive by the Braves. Goes nowhere. Loose ball, last touch by. Oh my, they're gonna say a wild shot bailing out Haywood. Gonna say last touch by the Royals. Sam Sherman to trigger. Baseline left. Gets it into Haywood. Long two, no. Rebound secured by Warren and he goes up strong. That just can't happen. If you let Quinn Warren get second chance rebounds like that, it's gonna be a long night. That ends a 6-0 run for the Royals. Kageris at the foul line. Gives to Kessler into the painted area. He's in trouble. Back coming. Hagwood. Floater, no. That was the height of Warren that caused that. Loose ball, last touch by the Royals. And the Braves will have it with 61 seconds to play in the quarter, leading 9-6. That was a nice off-ball action. Just couldn't get the desired result on that play. Ford will walk it up the floor. Braves leading by three. Has Warren top of the arc. A mismatch with Kessler. Post feed into the paint. Haywood swings to Ford in the corner for three. No. Box out and a loose ball foul. Committed by Sherman. So Sherman picks up his first, but more notably, it's the fourth on the Braves. And the way they've been playing, even though there's only 47 and five ticks left in the quarter, that could easily lead to a physical foul and some free throws. Royals give it ahead to Kessler. Connor finds Green. He'll step into a long two short. Rebound, Kageris fights for it. Ripped away by Butcher. 35 seconds to play in the quarter. Butcher pulls up, mid-range, good. Can't have that, he just pulled up and just, he just dribbled up and had a clean look at the basket. 4-0 run for the Braves. Final 23 seconds of the quarter. Hagwood nearly had his pocket pick. Loose ball, vying for it. And what's the call? They're gonna let this play. Oh my. Finally a jump ball. Three Braves got in there. And the Royals rightfully so were frustrated with this indecisive look by the officiating staff. Green will trigger right at midcourt as the jump ball finally occurs and the Royals will inbound. Hague was lucky there. He didn't get slow with it. Technically, he kind of made some extra curricular contact after the jump ball. Green looking. Goes in the backcourt to Hegwood. 12 seconds in the quarter. Will gives to Green with eight. Green handoff to Kagers with six. Drew flips to Hagwood with four. Will to Green with two. They got to get a shot up. Green extra pass. Royals running out of time. Lack of situational awareness by the Royals leads to an empty possession to end the first. Though all things considered, they're down just five. At the end of one, rebuff 11. Ron Colley six. Second quarter up next on the Ron Colley Media Network. Providing comfort for families in their time of need is the main concern of the staff at Lauk Veldoff Funeral Home. We are a small family-owned firm and take great pride in the personal service we offer and the family-like atmosphere at our facility. At Lauk Veldoff, we only serve one family at a time, providing compassionate care and affordable options. Truly part of your community. Lauk and Veldoff Funeral and Cremation Services. Call 317-636-6655. A proud supporter of Ron Colley High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. Back 
back at Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium with Andrew Mason. I'm Jimmy Cook. Happy Senior Night to you. Start of the second quarter. Braves control it with possession. Leading 11-6. Nicholas Sobek checks in the ball game for the first time. Sobek gives to Ford right side. Now Haywood on the right wing. He'll drive. He'll contort. He'll leave it short. And a rebound. Kageris. Drew brings it ahead. Braves back defensively. Kageris at the top of the arc. In the corner he goes green. Post feed Taylor. First one of these he's really had tonight. Joe. Pass taken away. And a loose ball foul going to go against Noah Schmaltz. The passing lanes for the Royals have been incredibly, incredibly tight tonight due to the defensive prowess of the Braves. James Clark gives to Haywood, who drives down the lane off the window. No, Clark follow no. Got a rebound. Oh, he traveled. Oh, my. They're called jump ball first. I didn't see anybody with the basketball, but Clark, he jumped up and fell down. And so the Royals will be happy. They'll get the basketball back and get the arrow, but it's been a weird game. 7-12 to play, first half. Royals trail by five. Braves lead at 11-6. Hegwood to Schmaltz to the leg of the Ron Cali R. With the right hand, he operates. Now flips to Hegwood. Will. Right side of the floor, flips to Green. Now Kagaris left side. Drew stops, pops, is fouled, and will go to the line for three free ones, and that's the second on Jawan Brooks. It's the second leading score on the Braves, and that's big because now it's decision time for Coach Glunt. Kagaris of the charity stripe. A 78% free throw shooter, and I'm glad I didn't say the sentence I was going to say, which is he has improved his free throw shooting remarkably in the second half of the season. The whole team has, but especially Drew. And he has made now one of a possible three with one more upcoming. One of a possible two to this point. Three shots in total. His first point of the night, by the way, averaging 17 a game, goes two for three. And the Royals are back within a basket. 11 to eight, Braves lead it. Haywood has it in between the circles. Now Sobek back to Haywood. Pulls up, tough mid-range shot, it's good. Haywood just really great for Bavuff. He just gets off that off-ball screen and just comes out and ready to shoot. shoot. The future Butler Bulldog playing well tonight. Kagaris right wing to Haywood, now Schmaltz. Connor Kessler to check into the next stoppage. Schmaltz has it right wing around a Taylor screen. He stops, feeds green left side. Chest pass to Hegwood. Will down the lane. Circus shot no good. He was underneath the backboard when he took that. Ford has it right wing. Now to Haywood, a triple no. Rebound up for grabs. And it's last touch by Brooks. He tried to throw it off of Hegwood, but it ricocheted off Hegwood's shoulder and hit Brooks before it landed out of bounds. I don't want to jinx anything, but Brebuff has missed all their three-pointer attempts tonight, so let's hope that continues and hope Ron Kelly can score at a better pace. Green gives the Schmaltz on the inbound. Back to Kagaris, and the Braves call off their pressure. Butcher picks up Kagaris 90 feet away. Drew, right wing, flips. Over to Kessler. Now Taylor has it top of the arc to Schmaltz. Schmaltz playing basically hot potato. Gives to Kagaris, now green left side. Post feed Taylor, one power dribble. Joe, scoop, floater, good. Taylor's first points the ball game. Royals back within a basket. That's just a good old hard nose post feed and look what it gets you, it gets you uh, within a possession. Warren top of the arc to Ryan left wing into the painted area back to Warren matched up with Taylor looking to back in mid post turns lost the basketball and he commits a foul as well. It's going to be the first on Warren the second on the Braves here in the quarter. That was just great straight up defense by Joe Taylor and I think he might have got a piece of that shot as well so. Green. Find Schmaltz, and Noah will try to bring it ahead. Trap is still applied, but Noah able to easily 
run into the backcourt and then turn it over. Pass was tipped, Warren to the rim, he missed the dunk, oh, and they called a foul. Green was behind the play when it happened. And they're gonna reward Warren on the missed dunk attempt with two free throws. Warren to the line for two free ones. First free throw, good. Warren's got four. One more outcoming. Second free throw for Warren. That's good. Five points for Warren, lead is five. 15, 10 Braves, more full court pressure applied. Hagwood gets it into Kagaris. Drew to Green, fakes a pass, now goes to Hagwood. Hagwood looking for Taylor in the post, can't find him. Hagwood brings it back out, has a Taylor screen. He'll go around at top of the arc, flip to Green, now chest pass Kessler left side. Left edge they go Hegwood. Now Taylor, contact on the floor over there. With Hegwood hitting the deck, they say play on. Kagaris to Green, now Kessler left side. Suffocating defense by the Braves. Hegwood right wing, back to Kessler, top of the arc, thought about a triple, into the painted area. Floater up, floater in. Great job by Kessler, even though it's a suffocating defense for driving in and cut this lead down to three. It's where it's kind of been this whole second quarter, right at three points. Pass in the corner, three is in the air, it's off the mark. Rebound, Green, and he's fouled by Brooks, and that's his third. That's the third personal foul on Jawan Brooks, and he only has two left to play with in this ball game. That could be big, depending on where things proceed the rest of the night. I think that was a frustration foul. He didn't get the loose ball rebound. Very well could have been. Hegwood will bring it up the floor. Matched up with Ryan. Hegwood. Crosses the timeline, flips to Kessler left side. Where else can Tyre get within one? Taylor to the rack, floater no. It's tapped out by Burbuff, and Kessler will reset things. Connor has a screen from Taylor. Goes inside out, thought about a triple. Gives to Green, now Kagaris right edge. Drew down the lane to the rack. He lays it up and in. Kagaris first field goal of the ball game. Royals are within a point. 15-14 Braves lead. Haywood into the painted area. Oh, blocking foul and count the basket. Oh my. Green was there set and ready to go. And instead he picks up a block. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Green was set for about a mile and a half. Haywood went up after Green was set. And an and one opportunity is not converted, but the Royals can't get the rebound. And a timeout taken by Burbuff. 324 to play in this first half. <laughs> Braves 17, Royals 14. 30 second timeout. We'll take it as well on our men. Steve's Flowers and Gifts is your family-owned Indianapolis and Greenwood florist. Our mission is to establish and maintain the highest level of floral value and customer service at comfortable consumer prices. For the best and freshest flowers in Indianapolis and surrounding areas, Steve's Flowers and Gifts has exactly what you're looking for. Check out our wide selection of flower arrangements to make your next occasion memorable. Call 317-787-3431 or visit us at 3150 East Thompson Road. Three twenty-four to play, first half, senior night here at the Vinny. Braves with the basketball underneath the Ron Colley hoop. Sherman to trigger, throws into the edge of their front court to Warren, and now Haywood controls around a screen. Haywood contested triple in and out, rebound. Royals fighting for it, same team. Kagaris has it. Drew in trouble, finds Hagwood. Back to Kagaris. Royals break the pressure. 
Kageris, right wing around a Taylor screen. Gives to Hegwood. Will at the Ron Kelly R. Hand off Schmaltz. Now he's at the top of the arc to Kageris right side. Drew a post feed to Taylor. They overplayed. Joe is fouled by Warren. And that's his second. Taylor will go to the line for two free throws. He can bring the Royals within one if he hits both. It's also the fourth foul on the Braves in the quarter. One more other than player control. Leads to free throws for Ron Colley with 2.53 to play in the half. First free throw, good from Taylor. Yeah, this going back to that possession where Taylor got fouled. That was a great initial move by Taylor to get himself in position. So he gets another free throw here. Second free throw for Joe is good. Taylor with four. Royals within a point. 17-16, Braves lead, 2.45 to play. Haywood around a screen, right side, into the painted area, scoop layup is good. Haywood's got four, lead back to three, full court pressure yet again applied. Kagaris gets it into Kessler, back to Kagaris. Drew to Kessler, up ahead of the pack, forces to Hagwood. Will, down the lane, pump fake, got a runner to go. Ball got stuck in the net. Sherman quickly jumps up to knock it away. But Hagwood now with six points. And the Royals are within a point inside Warren. Taylor blocked it away. Rebound Kagaris. And Ron Colley can take a lead in this ball game with 2.10 to go in the second. Drew for the lead. Falling away. No. Rebound Warren. Haywood. At Hegwood, drives, hangs, wild shot, no good. Rebound Kessler, it's a two on three. Bounce pass ahead to Schmaltz. He lays it up and in, and the Royals are in front. 20 to 19, Ron Colley with 147 to play in the half. And a whistle and a foul away from the basketball on Joe Taylor. It's noted I've done my fair share of complaining about this crew. I'll be honest about that one. There was too many bodies from our vantage point to make a call one way or the other. I will say this, though. Coach Warnke's not happy about it. Braves got to get it in. Have to get it in, and they do air it out to Ryan. Ryan in between the circles. 98 seconds to play in the half. Royals by one. Will operates with Kegaris. They're trying to get it to Haywood. They do. Haywood is doubled. They post feed Sherman. He's in trouble. Flips it to Ryan, who lays it up and in. Will Ryan, who averages three a game, got it to go and gives the Braves the lead back. There's a lot of shuffling the feet down there, but they let him play. Kegaris up ahead to Kessler. Connor inside out dribble. To Hegwood with 65 seconds to play. Kessler straight away. Triple is good. Connor Kessler knocks it down. And the Royals have their largest lead of the ball game at two with under a minute to play in the half. Ryan got free for a triple. He left it short. Rebound Kessler. Connor through traffic. Crosses over to Hegwood. Corner three. No, it's an air ball. And a rebound by Butcher. Butcher up ahead of the pack. Lost it out of bounds. Royals basketball. Oh, momentum is coming back to Ron Kelly. Just going back to that possession with uh, Hegwood and Kessler. That was a nice feed by Hegwood. And Kessler confidently stepped in to, to bang that three home. Butcher drove down the lane. Out of control. Lost the basketball thanks to the Ron Kelly defense. Full court pressure applied. Now it's backed off. Hegwood will walk it ahead. 35 seconds to play in the half. Royals by two. Will gives to Kegaris, left side, and a foul away from the basketball on Reese Butcher. And that sends Ron Kelly to the line. That is indeed the penalty activated. It's the first on Butcher, and it'll send Kessler to the charity stripe for two free throws. Royals up by two, 28 and two ticks left. Kessler, a small sample size, but a 30% free throw shooter. First free throw is up, first free throw is in. One more upcoming. That one's good as well. 
Seven points for Connor Kessler all here in the quarter. How big has he been in this quarter? Just wow. He's, He's been massive, done a little bit of everything. Has drawn fouls, has hit big time triple. He's been everywhere. Final 20 seconds of this second quarter. Ford crosses the timeline. Now holds with 15 seconds, gives to Warren. Back to Ford. 12 seconds, Ford to Butcher in the corner. Butcher looking for help, finds Warren. They leave Butcher. They get free to Sherman for three in the corner. That's good at the horn. And that's the worst thing you could have happened if you're Ron Colley. They played so well defensively in that final possession. But they let Sam Sherman coming in a 15% three-point shooter get free for a triple and he's made this a one-point ball game. Overall, Andrew, especially with where that first quarter was for Ron Colley, outscored 11 to 6 in the first. They punch back, outscoring the Braves 19 to 13 in the second quarter. And a lot of it was scoring spread around, but none bigger than Connor Kessler. Absolutely. He was just dynamite in that second quarter. Hope Ron Kelly to get where they are right now with a point uh, advantage over Brebeuf. Yeah, just overall such a great first half by Ron Kelly. Not a great start in the first quarter, but, you know, we, we fought back and we're obviously winning by one point. Uh, we're really keeping Brebeuf in check behind the three-point line. They're only one of eight. And we're hitting our free throws. That's always one of my biggest things. We're hitting our free throws. We're being very smart defensively. We're taking great shots offensively. So, yeah, just overall a pretty good first half. And I think if we can do similar or better things in the second half, I think Ron Kelly can knock off rough. That would be a big win going into the postseason. And we know the postseason for Ron Kelly features a matchup with Franklin Central on Tuesday night. It's senior night here at Ron Colley and the Royals trying to avoid having it spoiled. They lead the buff 25 to 24 at the intermission. We will step out for about three and a half. Be back with our full first half numbers. Andrew's key is a half number two and more after this. Ron Colley leads the third ranked in 3A for buff Jesuit Braves. 25-24 at halftime. Halftime show is up next on the Ron Cali Media Network. A proud supporter of Ron Cali High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. never lose your drive to deliver. Today's logistics marketplace is an ever-changing landscape where you can make your mark through dedication and passion. At Spot, these characteristics, along with drive and teamwork, form the basis for a rewarding, fast-paced career. Take it from our Ron Colley co-founder and our dynamic group of Royals alumni. They've never lost the entrepreneurial spirit that provides the foundation for our continued success. There's never been a time like this, and there has never been a partner like Spot. We're relentless. We are experts. We are accomplished. And like you, we will never lose our drive to deliver. Come find your Spot at spotinc.com slash careers. Go Royals. It's Freebuary at Peterman Brothers. That means when you install a new qualifying AC system, the furnace is free. And we'll install it next day guaranteed, or we'll give you 500 bucks. Take advantage of this incredible savings for a limited time. Visit PetermanHVAC.com to schedule your free furnace installation, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peterman Brothers, where great service runs in the family. A proud supporter of Ron Colley High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at indyteledata.com. 
Providing comfort for families in their time of need is the main concern of the staff at Lauk Veldoff Funeral Home. We are a small family-owned firm and take great pride in the personal service we offer and the family-like atmosphere at our facility. At Lauk Veldoff, we only serve one family at a time, providing compassionate care and affordable options. Truly part of your community. Lauk and Veldoff Funeral and Cremation Services. Call 317-636-6655. Meet Zach. Zach rides everywhere, day and night, rain or shine. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we know Zach. We know he's been saving up for a car. We're here to help Zach and you. Now get pre-approved for auto financing as low as 3.99% APR. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Rates subject to credit approval and valid on purchase of 2020 or newer vehicles. Learn more at IMCU.com. Welcome back to Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium. Halftime on senior night. Ron Cowley leads Rebuff 25 to 24. The Royals lead the third ranked Braves with Andrew Mason. I'm Jimmy Cook. Let's take a look at the first half numbers, starting with the visiting Braves. Evan Haywood, the future Butler Bulldog, with six points to lead all scores for Rebuff. Four points for Reese Butcher and Juwan Brooks. Five points for Quinn Warren. Three points for Sam Sherman. And two points for Will Ryan. The Braves outscored the Royals 11-6 in quarter number one. But the Royals responded resoundingly so. Outscoring the Braves 19-13 in the second quarter. To give them a 25-24 lead at the intermission. With the full Ron Cali numbers, the senior himself. Andrew Mason has those. Kessler with seven. Kegaris with six as long as Hegwood with six, Schmaltz with four, and Joe Taylor with two. Uh, other numbers that really stand out to me, uh, we've only missed one free throw tonight, so we're doing well in that department. I know that's been a struggle all year, but tonight has been a strength. Uh, something I would like to see improve in the second half is less second chance points. I know there's a couple times in that first half where we didn't get the defensive rebound and then allowed a buff to score in that ensuing possession. In terms of the fact that that second half turned, or that first half, I beg your pardon, turned, especially the second quarter, where for you did things change from a momentum standpoint for Ron Cowley? Uh When Kessler hit that three from Hegwood, it just, you could hear it in here. The building just erupted. Everybody got up. Yeah, and I think that just when Ron Kelly got the mom momentum to close that first half. So let's hope we can keep riding that momentum. Even though we're both, uh, Sherman hit a three in the right-hand corner to cut it within a point. I think hopefully that can be a spark for the rest of the game for Ron Kelly And knock off above here. That would be, honestly, I think that would be Coach Morky's almost like pivotal win. I, I don't know what he calls it, but like that statement win. But even though Burbuff is a smaller program, they're still number three and three. So this would be a huge win for our confidence going into Tuesday night's action. No, you're right about that. It would be a massive win for the Royals from a momentum standpoint. There's no arguing that. And if you're Ron Colley, it would really be a opportunity to have from a momentum standpoint everything going your way from not just a scoring output, not just a confidence standpoint, but defensively really on the mark in a lot of the areas they want to be going into tournament time. We'll take our final break. We come back, start of the second half. Royals on top of third rank for Buff, 25-24 on senior night. You're listening to Ron Cali Royals Basketball on the Ron Cali Media Network. Hi folks, it's Ben Stallings with Beck Service Center. Automotive breakdowns and routine maintenance never come at a good time. Let us help take the stress out of your automotive repairs. With 10 mechanics and 32 bays, we can get you back up and running with minimal downtime. Quality parts, experienced mechanics, locally owned and operated since 1977. Located at the southeast corner of Madison and Edgewood, we are pretty darn good at fixing cars. Let's go Royals. 
It's freebuary at Peterman Brothers. That means when you install a new qualifying AC system, the furnace is free. And we'll install it next day guaranteed or we'll give you 500 bucks. Take advantage of this incredible savings for a limited time. Visit PetermanHVAC.com to schedule your free furnace installation and we'll see you tomorrow. Peterman Brothers, where great service runs in the family. Harding Porman is a full-service printing and brand communications company. From creative services and strategy to print, signage, digital output, warehousing and fulfillment, mailing, e-commerce storefronts, and even mobile solutions. They are dedicating to helping their clients get the most out of their brand communication efforts with the quality they can see and results they can be sure of. Get the most out of your brand communications. Certified to be the best, Harding Porman. Marion University wants to know, what are you made of? At Marion University, our students are made of character and faith. Our students are service-minded and want to make a difference in the world. Our students possess the skills and intellect required of leaders. Come to Marion University, Indy's premier Catholic university, and let us help you find out what you're made of. You can apply for free today at marion.edu. Start of the third quarter from Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium. Burbuff with the basketball. Royals leading 25-24. Butcher has it out front. He'll drive the lane, lay it up, and lay it in. And the Braves regain the lead. 26-25 to open this third quarter. Unfortunately, the speed schmaltz off the dribble. Just a great move by Butcher. Kegaris hands off to Hegwood, operating right to left of the Royals on your streaming device. Around a screen from Taylor. Hegwood at the right block, in trouble, looking for help. Finds Kegaris right wing. Drew has a Taylor screen. Dribbles, pulls up, pump fake to Schmaltz, top of the arc. Noah flips to Hegwood. Hegwood has Taylor on a screen, will use it. Will finds Kegaris left side. Drew, jab step to Taylor, top of the arc, he steps into a triple. Joe Taylor with seven points, and the Royals lead is two, 28-26, early third. Gotta respect Joe Taylor's range from deep. Haywood, hands off to Butcher, left side of the floor, crosses over Schmaltz, falling away, tough shot, no, weak side rebound, Brooks, he put it up, he put it in, both Brooks and, both Brooks and Green fighting each other, with three fouls each, no foul called, just a big man's board for Brooks, and he got the bucket to go. We're tied for the first time since it was 0-0. Taylor, high post, backing in, kicks, Hagwood, baseline to Taylor, now Schmaltz, left wing, triple is good. Noah Schmaltz from downtown, bang, bang, go the Royals. They lead it 31 to 28 with 6-10 to play in the third. We're on fuego from three-point land this second half, so keep it up. Haywood to Butcher, top of the arc. Butcher is fouled on the floor by Schmaltz. It will go on Noah, it will be his second. The first on the Royals in the quarter, first by either team here in the third, and that's in the act. So Butcher goes to the line for two free throws. A 71% free throw shooter on the season. And he missed the first. Six points in total on the night for Butcher. Already a field goal in this first, or in this third quarter. One more for Butcher. Couple of dribbles. And hits, so he'll split the pair, give him seven points. And the Braves are back within two. 31-29. Full court pressure once again applied. Kagaris finds Green, and he'll bring it up the floor. Luke to Hagwood in the corner. Will, baseline to Schmaltz. They wanted an extra pass. They don't get it, but Noah still retains possession. He has it on the Ascension St. Vincent logo. Noah to Green, top of the arc. Now Kagaris left wing. Drew, pick and roll, could not find Green. Gives to Taylor, right wing. Now right edge, Hagwood. Will down the lane, bounce pass, Schmaltz, Noah stepped on the end line out of bounds. Royals ran out of real estate and turned it over. That was good ball movement by Ron Kelly, you take that in for position, but 
as you said, Schmaltz has stepped out of bounds. Ryan on the left wing finds Butcher at the Ron Kelly R. Royals by two, 31-29. And a zone look this time for the Royals. Ryan, lob, jam, Butcher. Ryan got into the painted area, lobbed it up to Butcher, and he threw it down with one hand. You don't see that a lot in high school anymore. Tied at 31, Hagwood to Green. Right wing, thought about a triple, now Kegaris right edge. Drew, smothered, in trouble, loose ball, and Schmaltz has it. And it's gonna lead to a jump ball tie up. Arrow will favor Ron Colley. That was great hustle by Schmaltz not giving up on the play. And fortunately for Ron Colley, the arrow is in our favor. Well, Brooks was playing a dangerous game there. He had three fouls, smothering Kegaris. Drew will trigger directly in front of us. Near sideline at half court. Drew to trigger, now he'll move further down into the backcourt and give to Hegwood. Will, matched up with Ryan. Hand off Schmaltz, now Green at the volleyball line. Taylor to Schmaltz, left wing. Noah with contact, can't get it to go. Got his own rebound, in trouble. Throws to Hegwood, corner three, no. Rebound, Ryan. Ryan up ahead, Green is there, he blew him over, and they say play on. The, re the putback layup is good. And it's 33-31, Braves lead it. Green top of the arc to Schmaltz left wing. Taylor now. Matched up with Warren, fakes a dribble handoff. Kangaris, or Green is thrown to the deck, and that's going to go on Haywood. Royals will inbound, baseline left. Got to get it in, they do to Schmaltz. Noah smothered and fouled. And if that's on Haywood, that's his third. It is on Haywood, so he has three fouls. Brooks has three fouls. Braves lead by two, but Royals with the basketball. Kegaris to trigger, baseline right underneath the Braves hoop. Finds Haywood in the corner to Drew. Drew to Taylor, straight away triple. It's good! Joe Taylor from downtown, and the Royals lead it. By a point. He's hit two clutch threes this half, so that's awesome to see the big man. He can, he can hit and knock it down from long range. Haywood, top of the arc. Now to Butcher. He'll put up a floater. It's no good. Got his own rebound. Spinning, turning. No. Rebound fought for. Last touch by Ron Colley, they'll say. 323 to play in the third. A good old-fashioned parochial battle as the Royals lead it by one. Haywood gets it into Warren. Post feed Haywood. Royals bring a double. He contorts his body and draws contact. Initiated the contact and got the whistle. It's going to go against Schmaltz. That's his third. Second on the Royals. And it'll send Haywood a 76% free throw shooter to the line. First free one, good. One more upcoming for Haywood. Coach Warnke asked the head official what the Royals have to do to draw a charge. Haywood's second free throw is good. 35-34, Braves by a point, 3.15 to play. Full court pressure applied, pass deflected, but it falls to Kessler. Connor brings it ahead. Kessler to Kegaris. Drew finds Hegwood, top of the arc. In the corner, Schmaltz, pass too hot. Royals turn it over. That was a nice right, just right thing by Hegwood, but just had a little too much heat on it for Schmaltz in it. 
trickles out of bounds. Well, if you're Schmaltz, you're kicking yourself. You've got to make that catch. Braves by a point, and in a game like this, every possession's a premium. Butcher down the lane, right at Taylor. He got rim stuff, got his own rebound. Second chance is good. 13 points unofficially for Reese Butcher. The Braves lead is three, 37-34, 235 to play in the third quarter. Kegaris brings it ahead. Drew around a screen to Kessler, left edge. Looking for help, flips to Kagaris. He thought about a three. And an illegal screen going to be called on Connor Kessler. Coach Warnke's beside himself. And a, it was a bench warning, I believe. So it's not a technical foul, but it is a warning. Coach Warnke was not happy with that call. It wasn't a technical foul. It was a warning, they thought. Haywood's at the line, and there's no free throws. It was a warning, not a technical foul. So Haywood will inbound directly in front of us. Looks to get it in. Kessler applying pressure. He finds Butcher in the backcourt. 2.20 to play in the third. Braves 37, Royals 34. Butcher crosses the timeline. Steps into a three. It's in the air. It's through the bottom of the net. And Reese Butcher will look towards the Ron Colley bench, and he was teed up, rightfully so. Reese Butcher looked dead in the eyes of Coach Warnke. Taunted that way, and now the Royals are going to shoot some free throws. That, that's just, that's as textbook as you get. Butcher smiled and looked towards the Ron Colley bench and taunted that way, and Kager's going to shoot some free throws. So that could be big. Because Butcher hit a triple, and he's been phenomenal in this quarter, but instead of it being a six-point lead, it's now a five-point advantage, and Kager's can further cut into it here, and he does. I didn't see that, but I'm glad you did. No, it was, it was clear as day. Uh, Butcher hit the triple, got back on defense, looked towards Warnke in the bench, gave a big smile and a nod. I don't know what he said, but at this level, that's enough to get teed up. It's a great job by the head official of recognizing yep. that. Castle to trigger. Gets it into Hagwood. 2.05 to play in the third. Braves by four. Kessler, hands to Kagaris, top of the arc, in the corner, Schmaltz, three in the air, it's through the bottom of the net! Noah Schmaltz from downtown, and the Royals are within a point, 40 to 39, Haywood the answer, that's good! Haywood knocks it down, Burbuff wants a timeout, will take one as well. 1.41 to play in the third, 30 second timeout, we'll step out to Braves 43, Royals 39 on RMN. Providing comfort for families in their time of need is the main concern of the staff at Lauk Veldoff Funeral Home. We are a small family-owned firm and take great pride in the personal service we offer and the family-like atmosphere at our facility. At Lauk Veldoff, we only serve one family at a time, providing compassionate care and affordable options. Truly part of your community. Lauk and Veldoff Funeral and Cremation Services. Call 317-636-6655. A proud supporter of Ron Colley High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. Back at Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium. Royals with the basketball. Will Hegwood controls. Top of the arc. Flips to Kessler. Connor in the painted area to Taylor. A pump fake. Oh, and he blew the layup. Joe was expecting contact. It never came. Give credit to Warren. He pulled the chair out from under him. Haywood nearly a double dribble. He's smothered. Bodies on the deck for this loose ball. 
Arrow will favor Burbuff on a tie-up. Oh, I thought he might have carried that first. It was tough to tell, but either way, things are getting chippy. Haywood to trigger, far sideline. Schmaltz, Kessler, Taylor, Kageris, Green, the five, or Hagwood, the five out there for the Royals. Warren, top of the arc, right at Taylor. Tried to body him up, went up and under, layup is good. That's a senior teaching a sophomore. 45-39, a 5-0 run by the Braves, 50 seconds to play in the third. Kageris is doubled, finds Kessler. Now Hagwood left side. Taylor, right wing to Schmaltz. Schmaltz to Kessler. He falls down. One dribble, three, no. Rebound Joe Taylor. Taylor, a power dribble. Flips to Hagwood. Long three in the air by Kageris is good. Drew Kageris knocks it down. Royals want a timeout. 30-second timeout will take one as well. 22 and two-tenths. Royals within three on RMN. It's freebuary at Peterman Brothers. That means when you install a new qualifying AC system, the furnace is free. And we'll install it next day guaranteed or we'll give you 500 bucks. Take advantage of this incredible savings for a limited time. Visit PetermanHVAC.com to schedule your free furnace installation, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peterman Brothers, where great service runs in the family. Twenty-two and two ticks to play in the third quarter. For Buff, forty-five. Ron Colley, forty-two. Braves the basketball. Haywood has it over to Butcher left side. Now Ford, back to Butcher left wing. Bounce pass Ford. Final five seconds of the quarter. Butcher with three, Butcher with two, skip pass in the corner, three, Sherman short. That's how the second quarter ended, though it was a make. This time, the third ends in a miss. Final quarter we go. Do the Royals have a rally within them in this good old fashioned parochial rock fight? Braves 45, Royals 42. Final quarter up next on senior night in the regular season finale on RMN. Never lose your drive to deliver. Today's logistics marketplace is an ever-changing landscape where you can make your mark through dedication and passion. At Spot, these characteristics, along with drive and teamwork, form the basis for a rewarding, fast-paced career. Take it from our Ron Colley co-founder and our dynamic group of Royals alumni. They've never lost the entrepreneurial spirit that provides the foundation for our continued success. There's never been a time like this, and there has never been a partner like Spot. We're relentless. We are experts. We are accomplished, and like you, we will never lose our drive to deliver. Come find your spot at spotinc.com slash careers. Go Royals. Providing comfort for families in their time of need is the main concern of the staff at Lauk Veldoff Funeral Home. We are a small family-owned firm and take great pride in the personal service we offer and the family-like atmosphere at our facility. At Lauk Veldoff, we only serve one family at a time, providing compassionate care and affordable options. Truly part of your community. Lauk and Veldoff Funeral and Cremation Services. Call 317-636-6655. Royals with the basketball to start the fourth quarter. They find Kagra straight away, triple, no good. Rebound of a loose ball variety is a foul call on Connor Kessler. So not the start the Royals wanted. It's the second on Connor. First on the Royals in the final quarter. Each team three timeouts left, all fulls. Butcher, who has 16 on the night, has it at the top of the arc, pulls up and kicks in the corner to Sherman. Sherman, down the lane, 
Opposite corner, he goes forward, who finds Sherman in the painted area. Misfired. Warren came flying in with reckless abandon and is fouled. There's no way that one's in the act. Oh, no. Warren's at the foul line like he's shooting two. And it is Braves basketball, but they'll inbound. They get it in quickly. Haywood through traffic, he's fouled. And that's the fourth on Noah Schmaltz. A lot of fouls here in the first 40 seconds of the quarter, already three. Three fouls on Ron Cali in 40 seconds of game time. And now Schmaltz will go to the bench, and Luke Green will check in with three fouls. Royals try to get it in, a pass is deflected. Butcher has it matched up on Kegaris. He'll give to Warren, top of the arc. Looking for Haywood, hands off to him. Kessler fights through the screen, now Butcher left side. Butcher, inside out dribble on Kegaris. Goes behind the back and towards his body and scores. 18 points for Reese Butcher, he's in takeover mode. The Braves lead it by five. One minute into this final quarter. Hagwood flips to Green, finds Kagaris right side. Drew rises, fires for three, and put him on the line! Drew Kagaris from the right wing knocks it down, and a chance for a four-point play upcoming at the charity stripe. My goodness, Drew Kagaris. Assist goes to Hagwood, just an amazing play. Here comes Brubs number two. I believe he has three fouls. So it's got to be interesting to see how that works out for him. So three fouls on Butcher, three fouls on Haywood, and three fouls on Brooks. Kagaris to convert the four-point play, and he does. 46-47 in one play. The Royals are within one point. Ford at the Ron Colley R. Matched up with the front of this zone. Look for Ron Colley. Butcher, left side. Looking for help. Finds Haywood. Corner three. Good. Hand in his face. Coach Warnke not happy. It's the second time they've gone zone and the second time they've been burnt by a triple. 50 to 46. Lead is four. Kagaris. Top of the arc. Drew to Green. Now to Hagwood. And another offensive foul. They're going to call legal screen on Luke Green. That's his fourth. Now you both have Schmaltz and Green with four, so decision time. Coach Warnke not happy. And he has a case to be. Butcher crosses the timeline. He's doubled. Finds Ford. Green playing physical with those four fouls, and he strips him. Hegwood to Kessler, left wing, and he turns it over. Royals tried to move too quick and they turned the basketball over. Butcher to Brooks. Brooks, jab step, blows by Green, leaves for Warren. And he lays it up and in. And a technical foul called on Green. That is and for Green, that'll foul him out of the ball game. That counts as a personal foul, and Green has his fifth. Boneheaded play by Green. Yeah, it's tough. It's a frustration play. He'd been trying to take charges all night. The officials were not having any of it. And now the momentum of this game can really swing. Haywood at the line. First free throw, good. This match is the largest lead of the ball game for the Braves at seven. It has now reached a new height at eight. Well, if you're hoping, hoping for some semblance of tonight's events repeating itself, it should be noted, as Roncalli calls a timeout, we'll take one as well. But it should be noted, if you're hoping for a little magic, JV team was down eight late in their game. They found a way to rally back and get it done. Royals will have to do the same. Full timeout for Ron Cowley will take one as well. Five and a half to play. Braves 54, Royals 46. Back in a moment on RMN. Meet Zach. 
Zach rides everywhere, day and night, rain or shine. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we know Zach. We know he's been saving up for a car. We're here to help Zach and you. Now get pre-approved for auto financing as low as 3.99% APR. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Rates subject to credit approval and valid on purchase of 2020 or newer vehicles. Learn more at imcu.com. Five and a half to play in regulation. Braves 54, Royals 46, and Rebuff has the basketball. After a technical foul was called on Luke Green, that technical foul also resulted in his fifth personal. And the Braves can really put a vice grip on this one with a bucket here. 54-46. But Butcher walks it ahead. Has a Haywood screen. Has yet to use it. Now he will. Butcher crosses over. Spinning. Blocked by Kageris. 5.03 to play. Drew with the basketball. Flips to Hegwood. Down eight are the Royals. Schmaltz to Kessler. Now Taylor top of the arc. And... Foul away from the basketball. If it's on Brooks, that's his fourth. It is on, no, it's on Butcher. And that's his fourth. Either way, an important brave to uh, reach that bench mark. Kangaris to trigger. Baseline right. Finds Hagwood in the corner. Smothered by Ryan. Schmaltz. to Kessler, now Kageris. Brooks and Butcher initially doubled, now they go Schmaltz. Four and a half to play. Taylor looking for Kageris, finds him. Drew, back to Kessler. And the Royals just struggling to find an offensive angle. Hegwood, right wing, to Kessler, left edge. Now Taylor. And too much time's coming off this clock. Got to put it up. Hegwood at the Ron Cali R. Finds Kessler with the volleyball line. Kessler hands off to Kageris. Pulls up for a triple. No. Rebound. Schmaltz has it. Noah. And Brooks picks up his fourth. So now you're playing with fire if you're the Braves. And they're not going to play that game. They're going to either pull probably Brooks. They have to bench somebody, and it's going to be Butcher. So they give Butcher a rest. He has 18 with four fouls. Brooks, six points, also four fouls. And they sub Butcher out of the game. Hagwood has it. Hagwood crosses the timeline. Hands to Schmaltz. Now Kessler to Taylor, top of the arc. And that's going to be on Haywood. It should be. Oh, no, it's on the run. Oh, it's on the Royals. They're going to get a moving screen on Noah Schmaltz. Oh, my. And that's his fifth. And so the senior and Eli Miller is going to sub into this ball game. The Royals, they knew they were thin tonight without Lauk and Elsner. And so Eli Miller comes into this ball game. And Luke Feldman inches closer to the end of the bench. Potentially we see him here. Either way, Royals need stops and scores, and they need them now. Haywood, hand off to Brooks. Butcher's back in this ball game. Ryan flips to Haywood. 3.25 to play. Haywood crosses over. They find Butcher. Butcher matched up with Kageris. Now Haywood. Kessler guarding him. Post feed. Brooks. Can't score it. Rebound Kageris and a loose ball foul on Ryan. 
That was great defense by Eli Miller there, not letting the offensive player score. So it's four fouls now on the Braves. Royals are already over in terms of their fouls. They've already committed five. So any fouls by the Royals outside of player control lead to rebuff free throws, but any fouls the rest of the way now by the Braves does the same. 3.05 to play, Royals down by eight. Hegwood to Kageris. Drew nearly lost it. In trouble. Post feed Taylor. And he scores. Taylor's in a double figures with 12. Royals down by six. 54 to 48. Haywood is fouled on the floor. And with how he shot tonight, that might as well be a bucket. It's on Kessler. That's his third. And now, one of the more promising JV players, Luke Feldman, is going to check into this ball game in the next dead ball. First free throw is good for Haywood. He's got 16. The Butcher and Haywood have combined for 32 of the Braves' 55. One more upcoming for Haywood. Good. Back to an eight point game with two and a half to play. Kagaris has the basketball. Hegwood crosses the timeline. Hands to Kagaris. Kagaris down the lane, threw it off the window and in. 15 points for Kagaris. Royals back within six, 2.20 to go. go. Royals in need of a stop. Dribble handoff, it was tipped. Haywood down the lane, left it short. Rebound Royals. Kessler, right wing, crosses over in the corner. Haywood to Drew, and Haywood mauled him and it's called. And that's four on Haywood. Or on Haywood, I beg your pardon. So Haywood with four, Butcher with four, and Brooks with four. Kegros will go to the line for two to, for two free throws to make this a four-point game. But now, if you're the Royals offensively or defensively, you're one wrong move from the Braves away from fouling out one of their key players. First free throw up and in for Kegros. He's got 16. One more upcoming for Drew. 56-51, Braves by five, a minute 57 to play. Kagaris missed that one. Rebound, Warren. So the lead remains five with 1.53 to play. Ryan has it left wing, matched up with Eli Miller. They get it to Butcher. Butcher matched up with Kagaris. Drew comes out to guard him. Man-to-man -man look for the Royals. Butcher. Down the lane, off the window and in. He's got 20. Full timeout by Ron Colley, or by the Braves, I beg your pardon. We'll take one as well. Under 90 seconds to play. Braves lead by 7, 58, 51. We'll step aside for 30 seconds and be right back on RMN. Steve's Flowers and Gifts is your family-owned Indianapolis and Greenwood florist. Our mission is to establish and maintain the highest level of floral value and customer service at comfortable consumer prices. For the best and freshest flowers in Indianapolis and surrounding areas, Steve's Flowers and Gifts has exactly what you're looking for. Check out our wide selection of flower arrangements to make your next occasion memorable. Call 317-787-3431 or visit us at 3150 East Thompson Road. Inside of 90 seconds left in regulation. Braves lead your Royals 58 to 51. Two timeouts left for each team. Those are fulls. 
Arrow favors the Braves. Royals will trigger. Baseline right underneath their own basket. Full court pressure applied. Kessler to trigger. Gets it into Hegwood. Will crosses the timeline. Goes full steam. Threw it away. And a foul on, let's see. We had too many bodies in front of us. Who's the foul on? I think, I think they might get it on Hegwood. Again, no signals happen. They're trying to fix the band equipment. The foul's on Ron Cowley. So the foul's going to go against Kessler. That's his fourth. So Coach Warnke wants an explanation. So either way, they're going to walk down the other end and Will Ryan's going to shoot free throws. First free throw is good. And the Braves are going to further put this game away. 59-51. It's been a, a weird game for the officials. I agree. The Braves have played a great game in their own right, and that free throw is good by Ryan. But this has been a very... Very odd performance from this crew. And now a foul 90 feet away by Ryan. So the Royals are taking as they're going to get an opportunity for points with the clock stopped. Hagwood at the line. So Will Hagwood will go to the line for two free ones. Coach Warnke and the officials still having a conversation about the last foul that was called. Royals trail by nine, Hegwood at the line. First free throw is good. Seven points for Hegwood. 60 to 52. Braves still lead it by eight with 121 to play. Hegwood, second free one. No good. Rebound, Kagaris. And he stole it, or he lost it away. Up ahead to Brooks. He's fouled by Hegwood. Kagaris was trying to make a play after the rebound. Had it taken away by Ryan. He quickly threw it up ahead to Brooks. Hegwood picks up the personal. And with free throws here by the Braves, they can all have put this one in the cooler. Free throw, good by Brooks. We'll give credit to the Braves on a number of different levels. Their three star players had four fouls for, in totality, longer than this, but in terms of when they all had four fouls for more than half of this fourth quarter. And they've not picked up a fifth, any of the trio. 62 to 52. Braves by 10, 114 to go. Full court pressure still applied. Hagwood gets it in. Ahead of the pack. Will finds Kagaris. Long three, left wing. Good. Full timeout by the Royals. We've burned all our breaks. So it will stay here. 107 to play. Ron Cali showing an admirable fight, but unless they're able to turn some turnovers, not foul for free throws but some legitimate turnovers this seven point lead is likely enough for Rebuff with 107 to go yeah I gotta start full court pressing now but it's been a close game all night but just great, great, give credit to Rebuff they come in here and as you said their star players have had, only had four and they've not committed a fifth so just great discipline by them 17 points for Evan Haywood 20 points for Reese Butcher Nine points for Jawan Brooks. They've 
that senior trio, and this is a senior-filled roster. Their starting five is entirely seniors. But... Ron Colley, unable to do enough here in the fourth to pull off the upset. Braves will have the basketball, and full court pressure is indeed applied by the Royals. Haywood will trigger Taylor's on him. They quickly get it in to Ryan, who beats the Royal pressure, fakes a pull up, lost the basketball. Kessler through traffic to Kagaris. I'm oh, going to call over and back. Kessler threw it to Kagaris before he crossed the timeline because of how much contact was there. And again, this late in the game, you have to be perfect to have any chance, and the Royals just turn it over. Ford receives the inbound. He crosses over, and Hagwood will foul. It would have been a big ask anyway, despite the Kessler turnover. Roncalli down seven, but he felt contact all around him, thought Kegaris has already crossed the timeline. He did not. So over and back is called, and Austin Ford, a 66% free throw shooter at the line, nails the first. It's his first points of the ballgame. 49 and nine ticks left. One more upcoming for Ford. That one's good as well. Royals have a timeout left. It's the largest lead of the game at nine for the Braves with 49 and nine ticks left. Hegwood crosses half court in the corner. Try to get it to Kagaris. He turns it over. Brooks. On the left wing is fouled. Haywood almost walked into a technical foul, but he thrown that down. He wisely thought better of it. And Brooks will go to the line to put this game officially in the cooler for rebuff. First free throw, good. Ten points unofficially for Brooks. 37 and nine ticks left in this one. One more for Brooks. That one short. Rebound Kagaris. Up ahead Hagwood. Final 35 seconds. Hagwood looking for Drew. Finds him. Kagaris hoists a long two. Short. Rebound Haywood. Royals. I believe will call off the pressure. Nope, they'll still pressure and foul. So Feldman commits the foul, and it's all over but the final score. Royals will empty their bench to some extent. So Drew Kagaris checks out of this ball game. He's subbed out. And this isn't the end end as there's still one more game to play. But tip of the cap to Drew Kagaris for a sensational senior night performance. Final 17 seconds. Hegwood brings it up ahead to Eli Miller who hoists for three, left it short. Out of bounds to the Braves. And the Braves will walk it up the floor and dribble this one out. Well, the Braves seniors took an L from Ron Cowley when they were juniors a year ago. They come into Ron Cowley's gym tonight on senior night and return the favor. Playing the role of spoiler, 67 to 55. The third-ranked Braves 
conclude their regular season with a mark of 16 and five on the year and go into the postseason on a three game winning streak. For Ron Cali, their three straight winning streak is snapped and they will go into the postseason with a 13 and nine record at their disposal. Andrew, some initial thoughts on a senior night spoiled, but a hard-fought, hard-earned win by Rebuff. Yeah, just a great second half by Rebuff overall. Ron Colley played their butt off to the end. It's just unfortunate, you know, Rebuff wanted revenge, and they got it tonight. So we beat them in their building last year. They returned the favor and did, this, this, did the same thing to us tonight. So honestly, there's a lot to be proud of. Ron Colley going to sectional play, having a winning record after 9-14 and 14 last year with a 13-9 in record playing uh, a 10 and 13 FC team which we've already been beaten by once hard to beat a team twice I say so that's hopefully the positive for Ron Cowley going into Tuesday night at Southport one note as the six per buff seniors take a picture at half court of Ron Cowley it's no worthy in a picture moment for them as that senior class goes 5-0 and oh in Circle City Conference play this season to win they already had it locked up, but it, now it's locked up as an undefeated Circle City Conference season and an undefeated Circle City Conference championship winning season for Rebuff. 67-55, your final. The Braves win it by 12. We'll step aside. When we return, it's time for the Indy Teledata Post Game Show. We'll go through full game numbers. Look at the draw for Ron Colley and preview next Tuesday night where the Royals path to a state title begins against Franklin Central at Southport Fieldhouse. Again, the Braves play the role of spoilers tonight. 67-55, to the final over Ron Cowley. We'll step aside for about four minutes. Be back after this on the Ron Cowley Media Network. Marion University wants to know, what are you made of? At Marion University, our students are made of character and faith. Our students are service-minded and want to make a difference in the world. Our students possess the skills and intellect required of leaders. Come to Marion University, Indy's premier Catholic university, and let us help you find out what you're made of. You can apply for free today at marion.edu. Hi folks, it's Ben Stallings with Beck Service Center. Automotive breakdowns and routine maintenance never come at a good time. Let us help take the stress out of your automotive repairs. With 10 mechanics and 32 bays, we can get you back up and running with minimal downtime. Quality parts, experienced mechanics, locally owned and operated since 1977. Located at the southeast corner of Madison and Edgewood, we are pretty darn good at fixing cars. Let's go Royals. It's Freebuary at Peterman Brothers. That means when you install a new qualifying AC system, the furnace is free. And we'll install it next day guaranteed or we'll give you... edu a proud supporter of Ron Colley High School, Indy Teledata provides IT solutions for businesses and organizations in Central Indiana. For over 10 years, Steve Battiato and his team of professionals have provided comprehensive computing support, business telephone solutions, network infrastructure, and productivity suite integration. For a free evaluation of your technology needs, give Steve and his team a call at 317-231-5547 or visit us at IndyTeledata.com. Steve's Flowers and Gifts is your family-owned Indianapolis and Greenwood florist. Our mission is to establish and maintain the highest level of floral value and customer service at comfortable consumer prices. For the best and freshest flowers in Indianapolis and surrounding areas, Steve's Flowers and Gifts has exactly what you're looking for. Check out our wide selection of flower arrangements to make your next occasion memorable. Call 317-787-3431 or visit us at 3150 East Thompson Road. 
When looking for reliable HVAC professionals, look no further than Ana and Bartram Heating and Cooling. Whether you need a routine maintenance check or an emergency repair on a heating or cooling unit, Ana and Bartram are available to handle all of your heating, cooling, and ventilation needs. Ana and Bartram strive to be the best, so call them today at 317-889-9574. They even have 24-7 emergency service. Call them today, Ana and Bartram, 317-889-9574. Back to Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium. The Indy Teledata postgame show is on. The rebuff Jesuit Braves spoil senior night of your Ron Cali Royals. 67 to 55, your final score. With the senior Andrew Mason, I'm Jimmy Cook. Let's take a look at your full game numbers, starting first with the rebuff Braves. 18 points apiece. So we were wrong with one of the point distributions there. Unofficially in-game. Official now. 18 points apiece for Reese Butcher and Evan Haywood to lead all scores for the Braves. 11 points for Jawan Brooks. So for the Braves, 47 of their 67 come from that big three of Butcher, Haywood, and Brooks. The rest of the scoring, nine points from Quinn Warren, five points from Sam Sherman, four points from Will Ryan, and two points from Christian Smith. The Braves outscored the Royals 11-6 to six in quarter number one. Ron Kelly outscored them 19-13 to 13 in quarter number two. Braves outscored them 21-17 to 17 in quarter number three, and 22-13 to 13 in quarter number four to give us our final of 67-55. to 55. With the Ron Kelly numbers, Andrew Mason has all those. Kegris with 21, Taylor and Schmaltz with 10. Hegwood and Kessler with 7. Everybody else that checked in tonight's ball game did not contribute in the scoring column. For what it's worth, and Andrew, I don't mean to do this to you because you've done a great job all year long, and it's just a t tiny correction. I believe the book, and I want to just take a, a quick peek here, Coach, before we get into things with you. The book had Kegris with 19, Taylor with 12, Schmaltz with 10, and Hegwood and Kessler with seven apiece. All right, that's probably right. That's my bad. That's all right. We'll, we'll just we'll get that. We'll just make sure we get that sorted out post game. Joining us as he does each and every post game is Royals head coach Jamin Warnke. Coach, first off, I just want to get your initial pulse after this one because I trust your eye better than mine. But it never looked like your group, all the things considered, being shorthanded tonight. I didn't see the effort level die. Oh, no way. I, yeah. I, I saw a ton of Royals heart. Yes. Especially from your seniors. Yes. On senior night. And we'll leave the officiating out of it because huh. I know you gave them your two cents. Yeah. Believe me, I gave them mine here. Wh where did this thing get away? Third quarter. Like I said, yeah, proud of our effort for four quarters. Third quarter, it just got away with us or from us a little bit, containing the drive. Um, they they spaced the floor a little bit better in the third quarter, and they attacked some of our defenders with the dribble. And, uh, you know, we gave up 21 points in the third. So we gave up 24 in the first half. We gave up 21 in the third quarter. And a lot of it was in the paint. And, um, you know, they they have good players, no doubt. You know, the, the kid going to – Butler has 18. The kid going to – Marion has 18. Um, you know, so we, we lost it there. We even, we went zone we went zone a couple times, and we couldn't get stops. We couldn't get stops there either. But I'm proud of our effort. I'm I'm disappointed we didn't get that signature win in the regular season. I think we're just saving it for the postseason. Coach, how much? And I thought he played great. But how much from a film standpoint can Joe Taylor learn? from a fellow senior big in Quinn Warren. And I'm not saying that Warren outplayed him tonight, yeah. but there were moments, especially in the post, where Warren is doing things as a senior that you would expect Joe Taylor to do as a junior and a, and a senior. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yes. I mean, that that kid, you know, five, he's a good player, big and strong and athletic. Okay, Joe Taylor's more skilled, and he's yeah. a better basketball yep. player. Once Joe gets to the level of physicality, we're going to have a beast on our hands. Okay? Sure. I was really proud of Joe tonight. 
He's in double figures again. He fought on the glass. He defended the rim again. He's great at the verticality. I hear what you're saying. I mean, five's a good player. Like, I'm with um, you. Joe, no, no. Joe has everything, yep. right? It's yep. just a matter of as he grows. Yep, he's going to learn. I, I mean, he's learned all year, and he's going to learn from tonight, no doubt. And he's got a big test on Tuesday now, um, you know, against Franklin Central. But, you know, he, he's stepping up, yeah. and he, he's ready for the challenge. How much of the – especially without Eli Lauk tonight, how much would have having another body to keep the rest of your guards fresh in that yeah. rotation of help tonight, do you think? We seemed winded tonight. Um, I do think there was some juice in the, in the game. Yes, for I sure. mean, there was some juice sure. in the game. I think it was the first one of the year where it felt big. Yeah. You know, like there were – heck, I got a bench warning. They get a tech – one of our players gets a tech. There was a lot. There was a lot going on tonight. A lot of juice, and I think that adrenaline maybe tired our guys out. Like even more than playing, it's just the emotion yeah. of it. Um, yeah, you asked in the pregame about our lack of depth. Um, I wasn't real worried about it, just because I'm an optimist. Sure. By, but but it, it came back to bite us tonight. Um, feel better, Otis. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Feel better, Eli Lauk, with, again, the, the countdown to sexuals right around the corner. Speaking of Franklin Central, last thing for me, and then we'll get to Andrew to close things out. We'll get into this pregame versus FC, but you're the optimist. I'm the glass half full guy, so we'll combine to not find a moral victory here, but they've played so well the last month and a half. And I know it's not the way you want to end the season, but or not to end the regular season anyway. Yeah. But how can this type of loss, knowing that, hey, they out physical you at times, maybe they won the bully party, maybe. Yeah. yeah. FC is going to try to do the same. How do you bottle this and use that as motivation to open the tournament? Yeah, we'll look at it. I thought our guys competed. You know, some things you can't. The good thing is FC has a good sophomore, but they don't have a dude going to Butler, sure. you know? <laughs> sure. I mean, that guy. And, and, yeah, we won't go to the officials there, but, like, 34 bullied us, man, yeah. and um, he was able to do really anything he wanted offensively and defensively, I felt like. So there were times where, you know, Noah Schmaltz, Connor Kessler, Will Hegwood, they're trying, yep. okay, but the dude has, you know, 20, 25 pounds on him, and he's able to lower his shoulder. Um, we're just going to keep battling. We're going to keep battling. They didn't call any offensive fouls tonight. We need to, we need to get that whistle. If we're, if we're out physicaled, and we take it in our chest, I'd like to be able to, yeah. you know, be rewarded for that. So i um, really proud of our guys, and, and you know, we're ready for Tuesday. I can't wait. As it is senior night, what is, like, what, a couple things you could say about the senior class overall as, just as a whole? Well, I mean, Drew Drew is the a growing leader, you know. I'm so proud of him and how he leads, okay. He's always been a shooter. He's a good offensive player. He – Made some real nice defensive plays tonight as well on, on Butcher. When Zero got going, we moved Drew to him. Drew did a good job on him. And, you know, he's a, he's a good leader. When we're fired up and when we're, you know, getting on some of our young players because of a mistake, he's the one to telling us, move on to the next play, next play. Uh, that locker room was really disappointing or disappointed um, just a, a minute or two ago. But Drew was the one, you know, picking guys up. And, and, you know, telling his young teammates that he was proud of them and the way they played. Uh, Eli Miller, I spoke of him in pregame. And, uh, you know, he got some meaningful yeah, minutes tonight uh, because of, you know, Luke Green and, and fouling out. But, uh, you know, he came in on some defense offense uh, substitutions and he went in and, and made some plays on defense. And I'm, I'm glad he got, I'm glad he got yeah. those minutes. And, you know, he's a, he's a big time, you know, not on the court, but he's just as big as anybody to our program. Coach, I'll leave you with this, and I won't make you comment on it, but it's just an observation from here. Reese, Butcher, and Haywood, their big three combined for 47 of the 67. For about four minutes of game time, they each had four fouls. Yeah. They finished the game with four <laughs> fouls. So How I'll, le I'll leave you with that, Coach. Yeah. Flush this one. A new season begins on Tuesday at Southport Fieldhouse. We can't wait to cover it, and we'll catch up with you then. Yep. These 23-24 Royals are not done. Nope. Okay. See you Tuesday. There is a tomorrow, and it rolls on on Tuesday at Southport Fieldhouse. We will take our final break. We come back. We'll get final thoughts and look ahead to that matchup against Franklin Central on the Ron Cali Media Network. 
never lose your drive to deliver. Today's logistics marketplace is an ever-changing landscape where you can make your mark through dedication and passion. At Spot, these characteristics, along with drive and teamwork, form the basis for a rewarding, fast-paced career. Take it from our Ron Colley co-founder and our dynamic group of Royals alumni. They've never lost the entrepreneurial spirit that provides the foundation for our continued success. There's never been a time like this, and there has never been a partner like Spot. We're relentless. We are experts. We are accomplished. And like you, we will never lose our drive to deliver. Come find your Spot at spotinc.com careers. Go Royals! Welcome back for the final time at Ascension St. Vincent Gymnasium. Royals fall on senior night. Braves defeat Ron Colley, 67-55, your final. With Andrew Mason, I am Jimmy Cook. We've gone through final numbers. We've gone through the coaches' post-game conversation. Now it's time to hand out our Indianapolis Fruit player of the game. Andrew has those honors. Yeah, uh... Obviously, shout out to Drew Kegers, but I'm just going to to give it to the whole senior class here. Obviously, it's senior night. Drew had 19, according to the official book. Eli Miller didn't score, but he played some really solid defense. So I give it to those players and the senior class tonight, as it is senior night here at Ron Cali. So the senior class of Drew Kegeris, Eli Miller, Charlie Elsner, recipients of the Indianapolis Fruit player of the game. Well, the Royals end the regular season 13-9 and on the year. But the season is not done. The second season now begins as they travel to Southport Fieldhouse, the site of sectional 11 play and their matchup. Those pesky Franklin Central flashes. FC defeated the Royals 53-40 to last time they met. That was back on January the 6th. It was a game the Royals were in for three quarters, and then Franklin Central pulled away in the final frame. So that'll be a great one at the Fieldhouse on Tuesday night. 7 o'clock tip, so about 6.45 pregame. Andrew Mason will be along for the ride. And Andrew, now this for you is effectively a... Um, it's basically a retirement match for you from here on out. Yeah. Because as a senior, this is, again, we, we yeah. talked about it. You've done a tremendous job, and I want to give the opportunity now to tip the cap to you like we mentioned. You've been really my, my first pupil since I took over for Rob that's been a multi-year campaign student. Yes, we had Evan Tremaine last year, who was a you know an incredible student in his own right. But you're the first broadcaster that I've had of multi-year practice and trying to you know mold you as best as I can and I've every chance I've gotten the opportunity to an incredible student an incredible learner you soak up the knowledge you have an incredible future ahead of you at Ball State next year the Cardinals are lucky to have you but your Ron Cali career is not over yet absolutely not I but, to but it is effectively it, yes. a, a retirement match from yes, here on out yes let's, <laughs> yeah let's keep going let's, I want to make it all the way but It'd be nice, yeah, yeah. but we got to start uh, somewhere, yeah, and that's yeah, that's Tuesday. Yeah. It's Tuesday against Franklin Central. So Andrew will be along for that. And again, Andrew, your career is not done, and we'll do more of this on Tuesday night if they get bounced. If that happens, then we'll have more. But whenever Ron Kelly gets bounced or if they're hoisting <laughs> the state title trophy, either way, we will have more of a flower giving then. But congratulations on a wonderful RMN career, and it's not done yet. we got the postseason upcoming. So tip of the cap you. to you, Andrew Mason. The executive directors of the Ron Cali Media Network, Therese Carson and Aaron Hommel, video operations director, AJ Ablong and his student crew, and of course my partner tonight, the talented Andrew Mason, the senior himself. As unfortunately his senior night and the Royal senior night spoiled by the Braves or buff 67 to 55, the final. Again, Tuesday night, sectional play begins in sectional 11 first round at Southport Fieldhouse. 7 o'clock tip as the Royals take on Franklin Central. 6.45 pregame show. We'll hope you join us as well. For the entire staff and crew, I'm Jimmy Cook saying until we talk to you Tuesday night from the Fieldhouse when the Royals begin postseason play against Franklin Central. So long, everybody.